Blog Talk Radio. tuned in to another episode of Two Lit Tuesdays right here on Indie Fire with your girl, Nakia. Man, like, I really don't know where to start. My my head is in so many different directions. Like, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of our listening audience from everywhere. I've been looking at the numbers from everywhere that tuned in on Saturday to the second annual Indie Fire Radio Awards show. Y'all, y'all rock with us for four hours. You know, we had that brief intermission, right? But for four hours, you guys rock with us. And I, I'm just, I'm so, 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 so happy um, to, 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 to just know that we have had the type of response that we had on Saturday, as well as throughout, you know, all of last year, um, for those of you who called in to nominate, I don't know why you was calling to nominate, but to call it and also call it to vote. I don't know why you were calling it to vote, but uh, for whatever reason you were calling in, you know, to um to to show support for those who were nominated and those who won. Um, thank you, and, and for those who called in just to listen to the show, thank you. Um, for those who did that throughout. 2019 for those who did it on Saturday I just want to say thank you thank you thank you the love was most definitely felt and I'm watching those numbers continue continuously or continue they going up daily there we go (laughs) they are continuously going up daily so you're still listening to the show so thank you thank you thank you all right um again we are now um looking at on-site locations to host the third annual Indie Fire Radio Awards show. We have three cities, comma, three states in mind right now. And so if everything goes as according to plan, by the beginning of June, we'll be able to announce uh, the city state that we have chosen to host our third annual Indie Fire Radio Awards show to be held January 2021. All right. So again, thank you to everyone who made that all possible. Thank you. Ah, so we all know this weekend, or well, it's this Sunday. Sunday was the Grammys. Yes. I, you know what? We may have to push it back next next year so that we are not right there with the Grammy weekend. I don't want to be, you know, I don't, I don't want to be just around the Grammys. I don't, I don't want that. Um, so we may push it back next next year so that we're not right there with the Grammys. We know the Grammys were on Sunday. We also know that we lost um, we lost a, a legend um, on Sunday as well as um, several other people due to a horrific helicopter crash. Um, we have extended our condolences across social media, but I would like to um, take the time to formally and officially extend the condolences on behalf of myself um, and the Indy Fire to those um, to the families and friends of those victims who were lost in the helicopter crash over Calabasas, California, on Sunday, January 28th, um, to include um, Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna Bryant, um, who was a budding basketball player, um, who was ready to follow in her father's footsteps, baseball coach John Altabelli, his wife Carrie, and their daughter basketball playing 
um, player, um, Alyssa, mother and daughter, Sarah and Peyton Chester, Mamba Academy basketball coach, Christina Mouser, and the pilot, Ara um, Zabayan. Our condolences go out to their family and friends. Also on Sunday, the Grammys were held in uh, L.A. And as a norm here on Angie Fire, we do announce, you know, the winners who have uh, that we really care about. You know what I'm saying? That we really care about. Like I, I could care less who won in the engineering production category. I, I don't. I don't even. I don't even know what all that means. All right. So let's see what we got here. We got album of the year. Went to this little girl racked up. All right, so I'm gonna just tell you, she won record of the year, she won album of the year, she won song of the year, um, she won new artist of the year. That's all Billie Eilish. All right, y'all knew that, right? All right, let's see. We have we don't know about best country, nah. All right, so best rap album went to Tyler the Creator for Igor, best rap performance went to. Racks in the Middle, that's Nipsey Hussle featuring Roddy Rich and uh, Hip Boy. Best Rap Sung Performance went to Hire, uh, went to DJ Khaled featuring Nipsey Hussle and John Legend for Hire. Uh, Best Rap Song went to 21 Savage featuring J. Cole for a lot. I think that was J. Cole's first Grammy. First, um, I mean, sorry, Best R&B Performance went to Anderson Potts uh, and Andre 3000. (laughs) <laughs> for come here I'm sorry you know it sucks when you are a proofreader and you pick up on people's errors right right they got Andre 300 up in here all right so Andre 3000 <laughs> all right so best traditional R&B performance went to Lizzo for Jerome best R&B song went to uh, PJ Morton featuring Jojo for Say So I want to say it was her first Grammy too uh, best Urban Contemporary Album went to Lizzo for Cause I Love You. Best R&B Album went to Anderson Pot for Ventura. Uh, best Pop Solo Performance went to Lizzo for Truth Hurts. Best Pop Duo or Group Performance went to Lil Nas X featuring Billy Ray Cyrus for Old Town Road. They got Best Video for that as well. Uh, oh, Billy Billy Eilish got Best Pop Vocal Album. Also, and let's see, best comedy album went to Dave Chappelle for Sticks and Stones. And I think that's about it that we really, you know what? Something that shocked me, best Latin rock, urban, or alternative album went to Rosalia. She beat out Bad Bunny, J Balvin and Bad Bunny. She beat out some heavy hitters. Um, I was shocked. I really was, yeah. Um, and Beyonce, Homecoming took... um. This is not on my list, but Homecoming took um, the best music film. Homecoming took that. All right, so congratulations to all the winners, even the winners that I did not announce, and to the nominees as well. Congratulations on behalf of myself and Indy Fire. All right? Uh, Guys, you know we always talk about having to add additional shows, like on Saturdays, you know, or having to have waiting lists, you know. You know how we're booked into, like, the middle of April right now? Well, we have added a third night, beginning February 1st. Uh, matter of fact, we're actually here that Saturday, February 1st. But beginning February 1st, our third night will be Monday. So you'll get to hear us Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Super excited to be here with you three nights a week. I might have to bring in a co-host, all right? So if you listen and co-host, I'll let you girl, all right? The month of March is also uh, very special to us this year. We're going to do something a little different for the month of March. We're dedicating the month of March to the month, to the month. We're dedicating the month of March to women. All right. I don't know why uh, I want to do this, but I do. I do know that on March the 8th, that's International Women's Day. All right. And with that being said, um, Throughout the month of March, Indie Fire will spotlight successful, empowering, trailblazing women making a difference in the music and entertainment industries. 
right? So, again, for the month of March, um, all women. So if you want to get on the show, contact Shabon or AJ at info at IndieFireRadio.com, and they'll get you scheduled for the month of March. Again, women for the month of the month of March in the entertainment and music industry only, all right? Then we go back into April. We'll book midway April now. So we'll get our men back in April. And I think I'm going to dedicate June to the men since it's Father's Day. You know what I'm saying? But um, I wanted to be able to do this for the women for the month of March. We do have an event um, that we're doing in uh, New York on uh, March 8th, International Women's Day at the Stratosphere um, in Brooklyn. So I'll give you more details on that as they unfold. All right? I think we're caught up now. Heartfelt ballads and melodies of R&B fashion, the style of music for the singer-songwriter, Sadrina. Starting off her musical journey at the age of six, she credits R&B of the 90s and 2000s for her vocal range. While enrolling in school choirs and actively taking lead at local churches, Sadrina soon developed a passion for singing. As she auditioned for popular mega-hit show American Idol, Sadrina also began to take an active interest in musical theater. Performing in multiple Broadway shows across the Midwest, including the notable production Schoolhouse Rock and Powerhouse Play Rent, Sadrina quickly found her way into theater. Debuting her first demo record in 2016, covering Maxwell's hit Fortunate, Sadrina began to emerge on the underground music scene. The Atlanta-based artist debuted her first single, Pieces, in 2017 and followed up with her second single, War. After releasing her debut EP, All for Nothing, Sadrina has shown an array of her musical style. Gearing for her new musical releases of 2020, Sadrina is definitely an artist to be on the watch for. In the fire listening audience, I present to you this evening my very, very special guest, multi-talented singer, songwriter, R&B sensation, Sadrina. Don't stop, get it, get it Ain't nobody ever been in common 
in bed, he rockin' with me, private island, go talk with me. Just tuning in, you're live right here on Two Lit Tuesdays on Indie Fire with your girl Nakia, and that was my very special guest, multi talented singer, songwriter, R&B sensation, Sadrina with the one. Let me tell you guys, she 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 about to jump on the line right now, but there's nothing like having very good equipment attached to an artist who has recorded in a studio, and the two of them go together so well oh my gosh like I had to turn my equipment down in studio because this shit sounded so good oh Sadrina where did you record because hold on let me get let me get your manager in here too okay let me get your manager in here okay boom there she in I got her too I was like wow you know you can tell people and I'm not knocking nobody I'm not knocking nobody but you can tell when you got people who record in a home studio and when you got people who record in, um, you know, like a, 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 a lower quality studio or you got people who record on their phone, you know what I'm saying? Um, because you got a lot of background noise. Um, the acoustics just don't sound right. People that record in their bathroom because they think the acoustics sound better. But when I tell you when I put my, my headphones on, to listen to your music just then, I had to take them off because I could still hear them sitting on on my desk. Because <laughs> yes, that, that, I need to get a mess to you. Oh, How wow. you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me first and foremost. I'm so excited to be back. Um, yeah, I'm really good. I'm just really good. I recently uh, went to New York for a little bit, so I'm here recording and working on new music, so I'm excited about that. And first of all, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. It was funny. I was listening to the playback, and I'm like, wow, that's me, huh? So, you know, I still get those moments from time to time. But shout out to my producers in Atlanta. That's Dope Materia, who produced that record. Uh, Jeremy Avalon, who is a DJ, a part of the famous DJ collective in Atlanta work crew. He was actually the producer who put that together for me and uh, went in with Dope Materia and recorded it. So I got good people around me, you know, in Atlanta. So that's always love. So shout out to them for that. Yes, most definitely. Shout out. Oof. Mm. <laughs> you need to drop that name again. Drop that name again, because um, I know we do have a lot of artists, a lot of guests that have been on the show who are in, you know, um, Atlanta, Florida, who may need to get in contact with them um, so that they Absolutely. can get their quality. Uh, Absolutely. That's so dope please, before the show ends. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know that your bio states that you your musical journey started when you were six. What was it like growing up as a child? Did you come from a musical background or at some point, you know, did you just decide that, you know, I, I like singing and it just went from there? Uh, I So mom used to always play music in the house, it, from house music to you got the seventies, you I remember once I heard the song from the OJs and I'm like, What is this? The Ivy's brothers, you know, it was always <laughs> music just going around the house and so when you're young and you really don't understand but you just like the sound of it, that kinda of grabs your attention first. And so I remember it was a Mary J. Blige track. It was I'm going down and mind you, I'm just super dramatic, screaming in the mirror, like belting, I'm going down. And I think then for me, it was like, okay, 
this is actually kind of fun. I used to want to be everything as a kid. I wanted to be a model. I wanted to be a fashion designer. But, you know, as more I was surrounded around more music, it just became it for me. I definitely think her, you know, putting those those bugs in our ears just kind of kept me well-grounded. And it definitely made me appreciate the different genres of music. It definitely made me appreciate the the age of music. You know, you get records like Shaka Khan, anybody will tell you to this day. She thinks is forever and always will be one of my favorite songs. So, you know, I just Mm -hmm. had that appreciation for all type of music. So I think my mom's that one. I got to give her the credit for that one because she really planted that seed in my ear to make me just be like, okay, I like this, you know. And then growing up, I come from a very church-going background, and so we were in church at a young age, and then you music music moves you, you know, and yeah. you you have those moments where you like you ever been to church and the church choir is just resonating so much with you that you find yourself wiping your tears and you're sobbing and you don't know why you're sobbing but you just <laughs> you're connected spiritually. <laughs> so yeah. It was definitely one of those moments for me where it was like, okay, yep, I want to do this too. And then started singing in the choir, and it just kind of went from there. I've been in chorus, school choirs, you know, most of my academic life. So it just, it was a matter of building and perfecting the craft. Me and my mom were talking a few weeks back, and she's like, I remember the first time you told me you wanted to sing. And I said, okay, go ahead and sing. And, you know, I sang for her, and she was like, okay. You have some work to do, but if you want to do it, you can do it. So it's like you got to have somebody who really believes in you and pushes you in your corner. Had that conversation been different, I don't think we would be here right now. Had she been like, yeah, nah, that's not it. Let's figure out something else. It it may have probably shut me down as a kid to be like, okay, I got to find something else. But, you know, mom definitely kept the support going, and she planted the seed. She, you know, was very conscious about what she played around us. So got to give her thanks for that. Yeah, I, I I think I remember um, a conversation with her that kind of, she spoke of that, you know, what you just stated, saying that to you, you know, and as a parent, as a mother myself, you know, my children come to me and say that this is what I, I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm I first, before I set you out there for the world to see, I want to see what you think you're working with as well. You know, and mm-hmm. if I think you have a little bit of potential, then I'm going to tell you, of course, yeah, I think you have potential, but there's so much more I feel that you can work with. But, yeah, I'm going to be behind you and push you 100%. So I, I think I remember her telling me in a conversation that, you know, she did say that to you. And I'm glad that she was there to push you, and I'm glad that she's still pushing you. I remember when I first met the two of you, and um, this is a question that I wanted to ask later on, but it, I think it's so fitting now. Um, I remember when I first met the two of you and looking back then to see where you are now and the growth, not only in you as a young woman, but your music has been yeah. phenomenal. Thank you. Can you, can you look at yourself and see, let, let's just go back to last year when you released um, All For Nothing. To, to you just releasing EXP, can you see the growth in yourself and in the quality of your music? Or do you feel that you, you just, you know, I just put out another track and, and I'm going on to the next one. Do you see the growth in yourself and your music? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think I, for me, my biggest form of expression is obviously through my music and with my mom, my mom is a spoken word artist. So that poetic cadence, you know, I, I obtain somewhat of that in my form of writing and stuff. Compared to my music when I first did my demo record in 2016, compared to my first single pieces, which I have so much gratitude and love for because that's my first baby. But even vocally, I listen and I play back on those those singles and those records and then I take 
a piece of work like All for Nothing. All for Nothing is dear and near to me just for, you know, obvious reasons. I'm definitely a person that writes from either personal or shared experiences. It may be something I'm going through. It may be something that my girlfriends are going through. It may be something family is going through. And I just put myself in those shoes and just write. And I think sometimes as an artist, we have to be careful of the message that we want to send out because, you know, in music today, you could just write a song and just have a five beat and then it goes, you know, it doesn't have to be much substance to it. But right. just compared to a year ago from now, compared to what I'm doing now, I hear the growth vocally. I hear the growth within the quality of the work that I'm presenting. I'm very conscious about, you know, what's next. What, what do I want to talk about next? What single do I want to release next? It's very rewarding. You know, it's one thing for me to recognize it, but even when I'm releasing music, to get those affirmative messages or, you know, the feedback from people like, this is your best one yet, or I love this, or you have come so far. When other people see and recognize that too, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm on the right track. So, you know, I'm hard on myself, especially when it comes to my music, because for me it's not about being the best or outdoing anybody else. I'm in competition with myself. Like, Mm-hmm, my next mm-hmm. project or my next single got to be better than the last. It's got to be exactly. you know, the numbers I did for this next one. So when you get all that other clutter and stuff out of the way and you focus and you just literally are locked in on the craft, it makes the rewards so much greater in the end. So I'm definitely proud, definitely proud of the growth. And, you know, it's only more, more, um, more greatness to come from here. Better records, you know, more, more, Popping music, so I'm excited. It's just I get excited talking about music because you know it's something <laughs> obviously that I have such a passion for. So definitely, definitely. Now I know that you're you you your genre may be classified as R and B, but how would you define or describe your unique sound? Oh my gosh, um, you know. That's a good question. I, I've been honestly reflecting on that because when, you know, I'm doing these records and it's time to start submitting stuff and you got to put it into a certain type of classification. It's like, is it R&B? Is it soul? Is it neo-soul? Is it hip-hop? Is it rap? It's, it's everything. It's, you know, I think more to be politically correct now, I believe that they refer to that as contemporary R&B just with mm-hmm. the cadence. It's kind of like how they do Beyonce. We all know Beyonce gives us the best R&B, soulful, pop, you know, whatever type of records, but they love to put her in that pop category because pop, she's right. able to cross over to those different markets. So I definitely would say I do it all. You know, I've been tapping more into <laughs> the the hip-hop, you know, sector of my music, and it's just it's, it's fun because it's like I get to tap into another side of my music artistically. Am I a rapper or would I ever classify myself as a rapper? No, I'm not a rapper. I'll be the first to tell you that. However, do I like to throw in an occasional good 8, 16 bars in the midst of my music? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you got it and it sounds good, like, you know, why not do it? Who cares what people think, you know? Somebody asked me, they're like, you a rapper now? No, but I'm I'm an artist that likes to have fun and I like to challenge myself. And I think that's what it comes mm-hmm. down to. You can't just put me in one box. And when you have that mentality as an artist that your music is undefinable and that it can touch and tap into every market, that's when you know you're on or something. So yes. I would definitely say yes. My first go-to would obviously be R&B. I love making R&B music. I, I feel like I definitely have an old soul. So you'll definitely hear songs where – it may remind you of those great artists where, you know, I may take a low alto ballad and, you know, if someone will give it, I, I cannot, when people give me those references and they're like, oh, you sound like young Tony Braxton, or you sound like young Whitney, I'm like, don't do that, don't, like, thank you, but, like, it's hard, it's hard, to, like, now you got great shoes to fill, it's like, oh, the pressure, but um, to be undefinable, yeah, that, that's what it's all about, so, Definitely R&B is my my forefront, my number one, but I I would say I can do it all. You know, there is no no, just one thing that I can be classified or labeled as. So speaking of being able to do it all, um, I know that you had uh, a major 
event that you performed at last year. And I don't know if this is the most successful um, high point of your career thus far, but what has been um, the most successful high point of your career thus far? Oh, um, duh, duh, duh. I would say I've had a couple of moments. I definitely think one of the most top favorable moments was me and a good friend of mine got the opportunity to perform for Soho House in New York City back in 2018. And it was such a whirlwind experience, just, of course, the nerves and the stress of it all. But for me, you know, being an Atlanta-based artist, and then when you travel to another market, and then you travel to another market like New York City, that was just like, whoa, okay, this is really happening. Definitely, I've had the opportunity to do perform for A3C Conference and Festival in Atlanta, and for me, that's been so rewarding because to have the city where I started doing music really believe in me and, you know, have those peers and those colleagues around me just believe and support in what I'm doing enough to give me that platform and be able to do what I love to do. It's, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, like you said earlier, in the light of recent news with, you know, Kobe's passing and the other families, you know, life is so valuable. You just have to be very conscious. So I'm so appreciative for those moments. Those will probably be definitely my top two career heights just because, you know, people don't have to give you that platform. And when you have people that really believe in your craft and really believe in what you do, you know, that's, that's rewarding itself. I mean, that's the prize right there. So I'm definitely grateful for those two experiences. Now, I seem to recall um, a magazine mm-hmm. as well. Oh, people <laughs> magazine. Yes, yes. That was that was. So okay, so. I also, too, outside of my music, you know, artists, they do it. I work a normal nine to five, you know, and I work in the real estate business. So one of my colleagues, she worked at another property, and she referred me to this guy who was planning on proposing to his wife. And they had actually been contestants on a dating show, I think, on Fox a couple years back. And just dating back and forth for three years, he was ready to pop a question. So... Me going into this, I'm just thinking, oh, this is a wedding opportunity, like a wedding gig for me to sing an engagement song. First of all, Nakia, his song that he wanted me to sing was, uh, what's his name? This is Why I Love You. Um, The artist's name is drawing a blank to me. Um, It's a huge, famous wedding song, but he requested me to sing that song and sing the a cappella live version of Boosie. And I'm like, you want me to sing what? Lil Boosie? Like, what? So it was definitely a fun experience, but long story short, we get to the venue, and everybody, you know, the the fiancé and all the girl's family is there and everything, and long story short, she walks in, and there's cameras everywhere, and I'm singing, and the girl starts crying. She's like, she realizes what's going on, and then in that same moment, as I'm singing, I realize this is one of my work colleagues, so it's like all full circle coming together. I'm like, oh, my God. So it was a cool moment just, you know, seeing black love, you know, right in front of you and seeing everything. And then a couple of days later, I get a text, and it's the link article to People Magazine. And the story, someone did a write-up on it. And I'm just like, whoa, this is not real right now. This is really happening. (laughs) So it's, you know, I still get those moments. Like sometimes I'm like having out-of-body experience, like, yo, that's me, huh? Like, what? (laughs) So that was that was super cool. That was super cool. Um, you know, so much has happened in the light of my journey in my in my music journey. So it's just like honestly, I'm just going and just doing stuff and not even realizing the magnitude of what I'm really doing in the moment until after it's already said and done. So that was really that was a dope experience. I'll definitely take that with me for the rest of life. So yeah, that was cool to, you know, see my name on people. And like seeing, I'm like, ooh, okay. Ooh. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I want to jump into um, your next track, and I want to say this is probably my favorite um, off of All for Nothing. Um, they probably got sick of me playing it on New Music Mondays because it was in rotation for a minute. Um, and um, on everybody's episode, it would just, just pop in whenever, even if they weren't, of course, they weren't, the, you know, they weren't the featured guest or, because that would have been you. But um, I would just throw the song in whenever I felt like playing a song. I'm talking about Bed to Floor. And, I mean, mm-hmm. I had several tracks that I, I liked a lot, but I think I like this one the most, if that's even a word. Um, just talk about that track just a little bit. I know that songwriters often write about things that, you know, that they know of, um, but how has your real life experiences affected, you know, the songs that you write about? Is that the floor one of those songs that is a real life experience? Absolutely. Um, so it's crazy because one, thank you, two, I feel like Bed to Floor is probably a all for nothing favorite um, just from the feedback that I've been receiving. So it's crazy to say, but this was the song that nerved me the most when I was doing this project because I'm like, who, I don't know if I should say this or I don't what? know if I should take it there. Or, yeah, it's like the ones you'd be the most scared and worried about are the ones that people love the most. So it's just crazy to hear that feedback. Bed to Floor actually was one of those records I remember. I was in college. I was going to school in Wisconsin. And my best friend, shout out to him, Joseph, he's in L.A. right now. And we just had one of those moments where we were in our senior year. And honestly, we were in a car. It was probably December. I think it was like December 2013. And we were in my car in front of our student cast, and we were just crying. And when I say crying, it was like one of those emotional moments where we were like, look, I'm going to go to Atlanta. You're going to go to L.A. We're going to do this music. He's an artist as well. And we were just, like, affirming all of our life wants and goals. And in the midst of that, he was like, hey, let me play you this snippet. And so he plays me, like, a voice recording, a 45-second voice recording. It's him on a guitar, and the chords just come in. And it's the first verse to bed the floor or what we now know as bed the floor. And I was just like, hi, him. I'm like, yo, that sounds good. You got to do that. Got to like, yes, I, I need that. Like I need more of this. And that was the last I heard of that. So in creating all for nothing late of 2018, I reached back out to him and me and Joe talk all the time. And I was like, Hey, um, I'm putting together a project and I really would love your blessing to use this record, and I really want to turn it into something. And he gave me his blessing, you know, him being a songwriter. Wow. That's what I'm saying. These stories, you know, to have, to be sitting on a song like this for five years. I sat on that. Five years. And I literally took the first verse. I had a good friend of mine, Phil, he's a guitarist. And, you know, he's been holding me down and supporting me through my music journey, too. Shout out to him. And I said, Phil, come on. I need you to do these chords for me. And brought him to the studio. We locked in. He did all the chords on his guitar, and Bed to Floor was created. And so, you know, it's not always sometimes my personal experience and my relationships. Sometimes it's those real-life moments, you know, connecting with my friends or, you know, just things that I've heard. I have a real specific ear for music. So it's just like Bed to Floor was definitely one of those alternative records. It's not your typical R&B soul record. Mm -hmm, It's not your mm -hmm. typical hip-hop or it's one of those, like, it could cross over to any type of market. So definitely uh, proud about that one. So, yeah, that's the story behind Bed to Floor. So to any artist out there that's, you know, sometimes I, I know we as artists, can a lot of people get frustrated because we hold on to music sometimes. Artists can package a track for months, years, you know, at a time, but sometimes it's all about the right moment. So you just got to know right. when to pull the trigger on something and just kind of turn it into fruition. So that's bed to floor. Well, I think uh, you released this at the appropriate time. This is bed to floor. Um, Sadrina.
What's good? It's your boy Drew Slim from the Scarfella Music Group, and you on the air with the hottest station, Andy Fire. Andy Fire. With your host, Lil Timmy and the Kia, right here, right on the here, station, right here, right here, all the hottest right hip hop hits, Andy Fire. Andy Fire. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. You're just tuning in, you live on Two Lit Tuesdays, right here on Andy Fire with your girl, Nakia. And my special guest this evening is the multi-talented singer, songwriter, and R&B sensation, Sedrina. And that was Bed to the Floor. Bed to Floor. No B. Bed to Floor. There we go. <laughs> Off of uh, her debut EP, um, All for Nothing. Yes. Y'all give me some feedback on that. Yeah, it's not like you haven't heard it like over and over and over and over again. Available on all digital platforms. All right. Yes. So um, before we went into bed before, I don't, I don't even know what we're talking about because my mind, I you know what, <laughs> my mind gets a little altered when I listen to your music because it takes me to a different place. I don't know, especially all right. So your latest track, EXT. I don't know if you have the opportunity to listen to the birthday show, but my guest co-host and I that night, like we flirted the whole time. We got into some big trouble. <laughs> While EXT was playing, like we were doing things we probably shouldn't have been doing while the song was playing. <laughs> so when I listen to when I listen to your music, that's where my head goes, you know. And um, normally I have to listen to your music when when you first send me your music. I have to listen to it several times um, before I can actually sit down and give some positive feedback because it always takes me to someplace else, which is good. Um, I don't know if that's your intention for your music, but it always takes me someplace else. My mind's a little nasty anyway. So, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, as a female, as a female in the industry, um, have you suffered any skepticism or resistance um, as an independent um, female artist in the industry? Oh, all the time, all the time. I think, and I'm gonna say this, and I don't mean no shade, no harm to anyone, but as a female, you have to be very conscious of the message that you're sending, and whether Mm. that's in person, whether that's through your music, 
at the end of the day, you're still a woman, so you always need to respect and hold yourself down like one. And if it's anything that I've been taught, you know, I've my respect factor, like, I don't play that mess. You're going to give me the respect I give you. You're not going to play me or cheat me out of anything, and then I'm less deserving of. Like, no, we're not doing that, and let alone in 2020. So being a female in this industry, you know, I've had people proposition me with, oh, I can do this for you, you know. But obviously, like, I'm not stupid, and what's good needs not to be, you know, it don't need to be explained. Like, people that come at me like, oh, I, this is what I want, and, you know, kind of insinuate, basically, like, I'm supposed to have sex with you just to get my record right, on the right. radio, or I'm supposed right. to have sex with you just to get a gig. It's it's not happening. And, you know, sometimes I get frustrated because it's like, once again, I'll show you, I see people that are up and coming and popping on the scene, and it's just like, mm, yeah. Like, I wonder, but then it's like, at the same time, that's not for me to wonder about how you got to where you're at. Whatever you did mm-hmm. to get there, like, kudos to you. But as far as I'm concerned, I want to be respected coming in this game because if I go out like that or if I allow myself to go out like that coming into, I'm not going to have respect in the game once I do there get you my go. feet there on you the go. ground. So it's just like, no, if I if I have to do it the independent route and, you know, I look at stories like Lizzo, Roddy Rich, you know, you got Roddy who – in 2013 was making music, and he just now got a Grammy. Lizzo from 2012, you know, her story of sleeping in her car and truth hurts. Yes. And, you know, the, the, that record was two years old when she released that in 2017. In 2019, truth hurts is your breakout record. Like, anything is possible. So it's just like I look at those stories, and I'm, I get frustrated because it's like, why, why isn't this happening at this time? Why isn't this happening at this time? <laughs> we as people <laughs> – we as people are in such a race for time, but at the end of the day, I look back and I reflect on those stories. I hold my dignity and I hold my head up high. And I'm on the right path. I'm in the right time. So, you know, female or not, you just got to walk into a room and command your respect, stand 10 toes down on, you know, what you're saying and what what you're pushing out and just hold that on that. So, you know, I'd rather be respected as an independent artist. And, you know, I do have my music to where it can be, sexually suggestive, but it's never to the point where I'm talking about pop it, you know, I, I, I'm never going right, to, right. not to right. say it's not for me, but, you know, I just, that's not, I try to, I know that there are younger listeners who listen to my music, and so I remember, you know, when I was growing up, my mom would cuss me out for playing Nicki Minaj's uh, pink print in front of my little sister, because it's like, yeah. you have to be conscious of what you're saying, so you know, exactly. at the end of the day, I'm always going to be respected before anything. So that's that. And that's what yeah. I admire. Um, and shout out to your mother. I know she's listening. Um, that's what I admire about um, you as an artist, um, as, as a woman first, um, and as an artist second, you know, um, not trying to fit in um staying in your own lane. You've made a lane for yourself and you're staying in that lane. Um, I've watched, I've seen, I've removed a lot of comments that I've seen men post, you know, doing promo for you um, for this show. I've removed a lot of comments. I'm not going to say they were negative, but derogative comments, I'll say. Um, mm-hmm. Your pictures are very, very tasteful. Um, but you know how men are, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I would treat you like my own daughter. And I just feel like I don't – they were inappropriate. They should not have been said. Um, and mm-hmm. so I I commend your mother for raising you the way that she raised you. Um, but the fact that, you know, again, commanding respect in this industry is, is something – and, and not only for the women, I think our young men – um, they they need it as well. You know what I'm saying? Because they have these young boys and um, young girls that look up to them, and so if they carry themselves just any type of way, you know what I'm saying? They're they're role models um, for our youth, and the independent artists are the same way. They're role models for our youth, and so if you're just carrying yourself any type of way, if you're looking any type of way, if you're talking about any type of thing, you know what I'm saying? This is what's being poured and fed into the minds of our youth. And 
um, I think it's a bad reflection for them. Mm-hmm. And so when they have uh, someone as yourself, you know what I'm saying? I think that that that's what our the up and coming generation. That's most def- most definitely what they need um, to see. And and as you stated, your your lyrics may be a little suggestive. I don't think they're that much risque. I mean, no, um, <laughs> it's just people's minds <laughs> like mine. You know, they take them places that they don't need to go. Um, you have several callers right now that I do want to be able to go ahead and give them the opportunity to you know ask their questions or. Um, get their shout outs in, show you some love um, while they're on the line. All right. Looks like everybody's calling in from Georgia. So I'm going to go ahead and get the first caller in right now. This is area code 678. Hey. All right. You're live right here on Angie Sayo with Nakia and Sadrina. Who's on the line? <clears throat> you're live right here on Angie Sayo with Nakia and Sadrina. Who's on the line? I, they don't want to talk. All right, so here we go. 404. <laughs> 404. You're live on Indy Fire with Nikia and Sadrina, who's on the line. Mm. They don't want to talk neither? <laughs> they don't want to talk to me? <laughs> You're live on Indy Fire with Nikia and Sadrina, who's on the line? Nope. All right. Girl, I never had nobody scared to talk to me. We're going to try this one. <laughs> All right. Area code 262. You're live on Indy Fire with Nakia and Sadrina. Who's on the line? This is Shayla. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. How are you? Hi, Diva. Hi, love. This is one of my childhood <laughs> friends, y'all. I love it. Yes. I had, <laughs> when you posted on social media, I saw and I was like, I'm going to surprise my boo and I'm going to listen to the show and I'm going to call in because I'm so proud of you and what you've accomplished, how far we go back. Like, I don't want to get emotional, Aww. but like, I'm so Aww. proud of Sabrina. Thank like, you. Like, y'all have no I idea what she's been through when, like, the everything from day one to where she is now, the growth, like, it's just beautiful to see and for her to always have a smile on her face and be positive. Like, that's a homie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I need friends. I need friends like her. I need friends like her in my corner. You want to be my friend? I need friends like her for real. That is so cute. Where are you calling us from? (laughs) Oh well, technically, phone number is Wisconsin. That's where we met. But I'm in um beautiful sunny Tampa, Florida. Oh, all right, Tampa in the house. All right. So I just want to so much support and love, and I'm so happy for you, Dre. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative for you. Thank you, girl. I love you. I love you, too. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for calling in. Continue to listen to the rest of the show. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to try your other callers one more time because they're still hanging on. Let's see. Here we go. All right. Caller 678. Area code, you're live on Indie Fire with Nakia and Sadrina, who's on the line. Malaysia, how are you? <laughs> Hi, love. <laughs> I'm over here banging crazy. my job off, but I just wanted to say I'm there. I'm so, so proud of uh, Sadrina. She moved to Atlanta, and I was one of her first friends, and, like, we've just been rocking since, and I've seen her grow so much. And just grow into the young lady that she is, just doing what she wants to do. So I'm very proud of her for making that move up to New York and following her dreams. Aw, thank you. Where you calling us from? (laughs) (laughs) What'd you say? You're calling us from Atlanta? Yes. Yes, I knew I recognized that area code. Yes. See, I need friends like you. You got, you got amazing friends. I, I need I friends really like do. you have. I really <laughs> do. You know, honestly, honestly, and it's so crazy because, you know, I've recently relocated to New York, and, you know, I still, you know, I'm between Atlanta and New York, but when you have such a strong support system, like, I don't have many friends, but the tight circle of girlfriends that I've had in my life, from the tender age of probably like 11, 12 
to now, I'm very fortunate. So, you know, they keep me going when I feel like there's days where I'm like, y'all don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is it. They honestly, they're my sanity. So I'm so appreciative for good girlfriends. So thank you. That's what's up. Well, thank you for calling in, Malaysia. Keep listening to the remainder of the show, and you enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see if your other call is going to pick up now. All right, area code 404. You're live on Indie Fire with Nakia and Sadrina. Who's on the line? Hey, this is Duke. I am so <laughs> proud of Sadrina known her for a long time as well and this last single is fire from the first moment I heard it even before it right? was cut and mastered and all that stuff like I was like oh that shit was that <laughs> so I'm just here to support I'm proud of you love you going places thank you, thank you. love you too uh, I will have me crying in a minute I'm gonna get it together <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You're calling us from Georgia as well, correct? Yes, ma'am. Well, continue to listen to the rest of the episode. I'm going to get right into that last single that you're talking about right now. Excited to hear it. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. (laughs) All right, Sadrina, you want to go ahead and introduce EXP to the listening audience? Yes, yes, yes. So you're tuned in right now. I am Sadrina, R&B singer-songwriter, a.k.a. Mashup Mama, also known on Instagram at underscore it's Sadrina. And this is my new single, EXP. Make sure you stream it, download it, buy it, send me your feedback, all that. Let's connect. EXP, let's get it. Can't wait to see ya Burning for you more and more Ooh, it's getting deeper Temptation from my mind You swear that I'm the addict My damn, you so fine I swear I gotta have it Got me thinking about it all home tonight Second guess and I'm about to watch Call you up on this time Count the days until this time Bump to see you fever Turn me up, but don't turn me out Maybe I can't wait to meet ya Yeah Right now, tick tock, no hands on the clock. 
clock, now I'm running for your touch right now. Tick tock, no hands on the clock, now I'm running for your touch right now. Tick tock, no hands on the clock, now I'm running for your touch right now. Live right here on Indie Fire, and that was EXP. Ah, uh, my Sadrina, mm, girl. <laughs> if you had, <laughs> if you, if you had one piece of advice to offer to um, an up and coming artist who may have listened to the show this evening, and they say, you know what, I think I got what she got. I sound good. Um, you know, I've been putting this music out or, you know, I've been writing music and I'm ready to put the music out, um, but I'm clueless. Like, I don't know what to do from this point moving forward. What piece of advice could you offer to this up-and-coming artist? I would say it starts with you first. It starts with self first. You have to be confident first and foremost and be passionate about what your music is if you're not if you don't believe in yourself if you don't believe in your music it's it'll be in vain like there's no point to even doing it because if you don't believe in it how do you expect other people to believe in it if you are confident in what you're doing and you believe that you have what it takes surround yourself around positive people who are going to uplift you and push you and motivate you to keep going find you and you know a lot of us get sometimes caught up in thinking that we need a team you don't need to start out with a big massive team have those couple of people in your corner that are going to help you get from a to b promote yourself literally invest the same energy that you get up and you go work a nine to five you go work a second third shift job you got to turn around put that same energy into your music into your craft and just be persistent you know this is something that I'm steadily teaching and, you know, drilling into myself. And so, you know, if I have to do it and, you know, I'm I'm on my journey and I'm making way, you got to do the same thing. Just keep believing in yourself, keep pushing, stay consistent, and just do it unapologetically. The rest is history. You got it. And have you realized, because remember now I've known you for a minute, have you realized the importance of not only, because this is something that you can also share with that up-and-coming artist, have you realized the importance of not only being that indie artist, not only writing your music, but how important it is to know every single aspect of this industry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, sometimes we as artists get caught up in solely the music element that we're not really bothering to understand the business aspect of music, but Mm -hmm. music is a business. Music is a business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter what they tell you, at the end of the day, if you really want to do this, the more notoriety that you start to accumulate, the more the money is going to start rolling in. But obviously it's a process, you know, it takes some structure to even get to that point. At the same time, doing shows for free and for favors, that we not no you you can't granted starting out like you you know you're gonna have to take some 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 routes to where you know you may have to do a show here for advertising you may have to do this but right. all in all you know you got to work your way up this ladder but at the same time you got to be conscious and you need to be very much so aware of you know getting getting your money and you know just being alert you know royalties licensing things like that you know, it's something, it's an acquired acquired thing, you know, to learn. So, you know, it's cool to, you know, be excited about the music aspect and the creativity portion of it and, you know, being in the studio or writing the song or performing the song. At the same time, that same excitement and that same energy needs to be applied to the business aspect of it too. So just pay attention to that for all my fellow indie artists out there as well. You know, don't be so caught up in the hype and trying to get that deal. Because at the end of the day, once again, they're going to take 
dollars off the back end, and you know, they're going to charge you and tax you for every single little thing, please believe. But when you're doing it as an independent artist, I know it's hard because it's like you, if you're working a job, you got to allocate certain funds to this or to tours or to travel to expenses, but make it worth it. Make it worth it. I wish you could see how huge my smile is right now. Just to hear, I can hear so much growth in you. It, I'm telling you, it is so phenomenal. Rhonda, oh, you and I, we're going to drink, girl. We're going to drink. We're going to drink <laughs> on this right here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So to those um, artists who have questions, again, when I bring the guests on the show and they drop these gems, make sure that you're grasping onto everything that you can get a hold of and make this applicable to every part of your life all right this is free info a lot of this is trial and error these artists have gone through this they know of what they speak of all right so they're giving you this information so that you don't have to go down these same roads make mistakes that they've made you know what i'm saying they they perfected a lot of what they're telling you mm-hmm. giving you this information so that it's going to assist you and get you to where they are and above all right we're just trying to elevate you guys all right Sadrina, the floor is now yours to go ahead and get all of your contact information out for those who may be listening live now or for those who may come back and listen to one of the many, 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 many playback shows. As you know, we are on about 12 different platforms. And uh, we just submitted to iHeartRadio today. Rhonda, yes, we submitted today to iHeartRadio. So um, go ahead and get the information out. And, uh, yeah, the floor is yours. Master Mama here again. You can follow me everywhere on all social media, Instagram at underscore it's Sadrina. That's Sadrina with a C, C E D R I N A. That's Twitter. That's Facebook. You can also check out my latest updates for all my content on my website. That's www.itsadrina.com. I'm also got a new video coming out for EXP, so be on the lookout for that as well. You can also follow me on my YouTube channel, subscribe. I'll do a lot of my mashups. You'll call me you'll hear me calling myself mashup mama. So if you like a good mashup of good cover songs, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it's the dream as well. And yeah, twenty twenty. It's time to it's time to do it up. It's time to do it up. The price just went up, so yeah, we're going hard. So yes, follow me. I love feedback, so if y'all have any feedback for me, if you listen to any of my songs, you love it, you hate it, tell me what you did like, what you didn't like. I want to hear all of that. Let's connect. Make sure that you're looking out for Sedrina also releasing this year, later this year. Um, her next project, Seasons, will be dropping. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. You didn't talk about that, did you? Mm. Mm, mm, we ain't get there. Mm. We ain't get there. We we gonna we gonna mm. keep little net for now, cause you know it's it's my baby's still cooking. You know it's still brewing. So you know just let the title marinate. You know seasons and let the imagination wonder. But yeah, new project definitely on the way this year. Twenty twenty is such a formative year. So you know it's been a little crazy to start, but once again positive energy when you get no it and when you're very focused and you got a, a target goal, you know, we're not letting the ways of the world distract that. So, you know, it's time, time to do our thing. So I'm excited for that project to come later on in the year. All right. I'm excited as well. Guys, make sure that you are back here on Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we will have Dream Wake Work published author T. Bedford uh, here with us. And then we are here on mm, Saturday um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with um, somebody. Uh, just tune in. He's here. He's going to be calling in. Uh, we have a U.S. Army soldier. Yes, he is an artist, a rap artist. He's calling in from Korea. All right, so he'll be gracing us with his presence on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you cannot make them all, please do not miss them all. All right? So until 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, you guys have a good night.